Hello, I'm Brianna. Welcome to my life on paper where paper and pictures tell my story. Welcome to Creating with Sketches, a scrapbook process collaboration featuring sketches by Allison Davis. We are using two page number five. I am using option number 15. I cannot show you the sketch because it is paid content, but I can tell you that with all these sketches, they give so many options. It is so worth, uh, it's a it's a digital copy and it's so worth it. Um, I was super excited because once I figured out how many photos I was going to use, I went into my um, photos and these pictures fit just perfectly. So these pictures are from when myself and my middle da daughter Meredith uh, went on a youth trip down to Florida. Uh, this is a Christian uh, band, Rend Collective, and... I actually took the photos from online. That's why they are such good photos. Um, and I got those developed and they're perfect. And the sketch itself, let me look at the sketch, needs, I think there were five picture, one, two, three, four, five. Mine is five and mine is a little bit different. I mean, they're, they're all a little bit different, but I chose one um, that used a three and a half by five rather than two smaller, like, I don't know if they were three by four or what have you. So. I've got the five photos. Two of them were easily trimmed down to four by four. I am using this wonderful uh, paper collection from Scrapbook Generation. It is created by Debbie Rush Sanders, who is Allison Davis's mom. And it is called Piano Forte Plus. And um, I mean, I, there's different sheets of it. Uh, it does have the hexagons here. Uh, what I'm doing is I can't use my hexagon punch on every one of them because it's a little bit too close, but I can pull it off. There's enough um, white space in between them that like every other one I can use the punch on. So what I do is use the punch on every other one, cut out with my scissors the others that I can't use the punch on, and then I'm going to back, I'm going to use the same punch, cut out white pieces of paper, white hexagons, and then back the the ones that aren't don't have a white border um, with the, the white hexagon and that I'm going to use um, in the sketch there is circles that go across um, the page and instead I'm going to use hexagons and these are just so perfect for a music um, I'm, I was going to almost said music video a music layout Today is the first day of October. So the whole month of October, I am joining uh, Christie's Beautiful Life in her 30 Days of Sketches. Um, they're all exclusive sketches and they are all double page layouts, which I feel like this is getting me ready for. So it was a good, good practice run. I am working on this ahead. So you're gonna see me put out these hexagons and to go across the page, I put one right over uh, the drummer's head why are they wearing panda heads? I'm not really sure it was a thing. So I've got two pictures with them wearing panda heads, but um, I don't even think about it and I just lay them right over the panda's head. So you'll see how um, later how um, I adjust this so that it's not covering any of the important part of the photos. This is the final month for this series, um, but I, I'll tell you right now, I will enjoy to continue using these sketches. Um, I've had really fun playing along. And make sure that you check below because a list of everyone that's playing along uh, with Allison, this Allison Davis sketches um, will be listed below. I can give you the measurements of the papers, but it's pretty easy when you're looking at the size of the photos. So I've got a four by four photo on the right and a four by six, that means the length of the bottom one is um, 10 inches and then it's also four inches thick um, obviously on the left hand side we've got a four by four inch piece of cards uh, pattern paper up on the left corner top corner and then the right lower corner is the four by six uh, pattern paper I also did those strips on the bottom the white one is a quarter of an inch and then the one above it is a half an inch and those uh, are the same sizes as the strips of paper up on the left upper corner on the left hand side. So I do uh, take this five, is it five 
by three and a half and I give it a quarter inch border all the way around. And then I'm gonna use my ruler to put two, to kind of line up two inches on the top because I know there'll be, if I work with two inches on the top border, I'll, that'll give me two inches on the bottom border and that's what I want. So all of the measurements are based, on, I mean, this first photo I glue down is kind of my starting point. I make sure that's lined up and perfect and then all the other pieces will fall into place. Uh, because I know I have that one in the correct place. The rest of this layout goes together very easily. Um, it is a two-page layout, so it does take me longer than a than a video where I'm only doing a one-page layout. I do use my ATG adhesive to get everything glued down. You will see me come in with my liquid glue, my uh, uh, Barely Art glue at the end just to get some some edges down. Um, this is not a, a, an overly embellished layout. Um, I tend to gravitate to more, um, so I don't know if I want to call them simple, simple layouts with not so much embellishing. And I stuck to that definitely on this layout. Um, you also could take the same sketch and embellish a whole heck of a lot more to your liking and it would still work for you. So these photos are from last year, October, so 2023, August, did I say October, August, 2023. Um, I'm going to a scrapbook retreat coming in um, later in this month. And I do look forward to getting some of the, these layouts um, from that trip done. Uh, I, I, for a while, I was keeping about six months uh, behind uh, in my scrapbooking. Then I started a YouTube channel and I jump around, even though I uh, scrapbook and put them in my album chronologically, I will jump around within that period of time. So um, I'm current up to uh, August, 2023. And then I have a, just holes, right? That I just keep plugging away at. And when I go to um, my retreats, I've got one coming up in October and no, or this month and November. Um, I like to kind of um, do those uh, back in August then to to move myself forward but also the ones that I've probably not been scrapbooking from that time probably have a lot of pictures of people in it that don't want to be on YouTube so it, it kind of it helps me get caught up a little bit plus gets those layouts down that I don't necessarily want to to show on YouTube so I'm looking forward to those two events coming up Here's that. I was just uh, using that glue to get some of those corners down. So I will lay out these hexagons and I was pretty excited how they went together. Um, I think, you know, they were laid out a little bit differently uh, the first time and now I'll go in paying attention to colors and uh, patterns and not trying, you know, trying to get the black ones to not sit by each other. And also the black ones I didn't want on the outside either, so close to the black paper. So I'm just going to spread those apart. Off camera, I have cut out um, the letters. So there are tag letters um, as part of this paper collection. Um, and I tried my best to really, <laughs> well, you'll see. So there, they, there, there's six different colors and it's hard to get, I like, to instead of random I like to do it in order so there's gold and light gray and dark gray and I would have preferred to do the same pattern over and over but because there's only so many letters and so many colors it didn't work that way but I think um, in the end when I cut them all out and line them up I think that you won't notice oh there you can see run down there already um, I think you will notice that I did my best and I don't think it's noticeable that it's not in a pattern or that it was supposed to be in a pattern and it's not. Did I, so on the left hand side, I just shifted those up just a little bit, those hexagons and they work so slick like that because they've got those um, sides that you can just put alongside each other. I feel like I'm, my words are kind of not coming tonight, but um, I offset the two upper hexagons and that worked really good just to go over the panda's head rather than right through it. So I'm going to lay down this half inch decorative border there and then I'm going to lay down my 
uh, title and what you will find it says like long title on the sketch but what happens is that the photo is supposed to go on the right hand side there um, but my my long title takes up the whole thing here's where you can see that I got yeah if, if you're not like counting out the letters you would never I don't think you would ever notice that it's not got the same pattern um, but here you'll see where it takes up the whole space and there's no room for my photo. And then it's a matter of where the heck is my photo going to go? Um, not there. <laughs> so I do move it. And so I think, well, maybe if I move it all under the hexagons, the rend, it's rend is one word and collective is the other. So maybe I could, you know, do that and then move them all up and the photo will fit, which it does not. <laughs> so then my next idea is to, I think, move it above the, I'm thinking hard. Uh, nope. I'm going to move it. I'm going to try to put it all on the left-hand side. Because I don't, I mean, I thought about splitting up the word collective, but, you know, it's a three-ring binder. They don't sit exactly next to themselves, so it kind of looks wonky. So I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to lay it like this and then put my photo where it is supposed to go. And actually, that wouldn't have looked the worst. That would have been okay. But I didn't stop there. So then I believe the next thing I do is... Oh, give it one more shot over there. <laughs> Again, I think this would have been okay. just wasn't my favorite. So I'm going to try it up on the top. Because again, you can you can break those in up into the two words that they are. Rend and collective. And... Um, and I thought, you know, with these being kind of like banners or tags or whatever, they might look good up at the top. I didn't like the way that looked. I don't know. That wasn't, it was an option, but it wasn't a good option for me. So the next thing I'll do is bring them back down again. And then, oh, I do cl cl cut these stars out from the, the cut apart sheet. And I give, and then I think, what if I brought this this and it wasn't ideal, but I did bring that one photo to the left hand side and then brought my um, title down to the bottom again. And that is what I am going to go with. Um, I decided I liked it best. You know, leave me a comment and tell me where you would have put the title because <laughs> I think honestly, almost any of those were good options, just not what I was looking for. So what I'm going to do first is get collective down there the way I like it and then put rend in the in the middle, you know, um, of all the letters. I'll glue that photo down on the left and then those little stars are kind of going to kind of be decorative items, but kind of like anchoring the phone, the photo there. And then I will go to gluing down. I've got one more um, star that goes up in the left. And then my finishing touch is just to glue down each of those letters. And I'm really happy with the way this turns out. Um, another thing, I you could get away with a pattern paper in the background. I know it would be a lot. Um, maybe it would be kind of more of a subtle ba uh, pattern paper, but it's also something. The other thing I could have done is add splatters to the, bl the black stock back there just to give it a little bit more interest as well and again you could add a lot more embellishments including um, enamel dots and or sequins as well so there we go rend collective it was a great band it was a great time and I can't wait to scrapbook more pictures of this trip so uh, with that, I want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a fabulous day, and please come back and see me again soon.